long stem to opium pipe, just off the fingertips of the dead king, inclined less than innocently, like crucial evidence in a movie, <laughs> black and white film noir movie. Murder mystery, a clue. Seeking to, uh, backs away. He doesn't seem concerned. Uh, at the scene of death, murmuring, uh, you shall be safe in the generous, uh, Malmastia protection of our king, Sharif, yeah. Oh. And, uh, welcome. Too much stooge. Or rough Greek descent. And the Yarkon Valley. Persian descent. Remember this. This is crucial to the story. Uh, they look different from each other. The Persians all descended. Hawk noses. Short, piercing eyes. Huge Persian hairy chests. These are dark, hairy, yeah, neighbors. And we're fair-skinned, fair, fair, descended from Greeks who split off from the troops of Alexander. Ah, uh, excuse me, Kipling of London. Uh, I must attend to my family now. Yeah. Well, Kipling says, uh, well, thanks for the ride, man. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, <sighs> feels good to be home. <laughs> and I've never been here before. What's up? Um, well, Ki what's up? Kipling turns up the, the wick in the glass with a lantern uh, to illuminate the scene. The air in the throne room stagnant. It's like 350 years old autumn zombie air. Heavy with the scent of opium. As if the last windows hasn't been open. Since they started making fires, striking flint together. Heavy burgundy curtains. Oh, they're heavy. Velvet? And they're rotting and tearing under their own weight. I mean, uh, the fall of the House of Usher here, Edgar Allan Poe? We're talking. <laughs> yeah. Um... Bizarre. The hairs on the back of the neck of Kipling go right up at this time. Dust covered cobweb. Ebex heads. Ooh. We have this enlightened Zen patience. They just... Well, he steps deeper into the throne room. Oh, and he's caught. <laughs> Is this a creek? Freaky visual crossfire. There's floor to ceiling, gilded golden frame mirrors. The hall of the mirrors and his reflection is just reflected back and forth inf infinitely into a visual abyss of. He feels like he's tripping on some Frisco acid here. Um, back and forth. And the only sound, the sound, tick. Talk? Oh, well, a grandfather pendulum clock? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, brass nameplate. Westminster Watch Company, Calcutta, 1864. Wonder how they got that up here, huh? Must have used some yaks. Oh, he holds, oh, a glass hike. Okay, so it dusts off the wind uh, glass with two fingers. What? A fully saddled and stuffed Marlboro polo sheep? 
Marco Polo shape. We're talking Silk Road. Stares at Kipling dumbly. Dazed and frozen in time. You know. Well, opposite the uh, Turkestani uh, spoken uh, uh, divan of dead king, once elegant dining table, hmm. hewn from thick uh, uh, beams of uh, sycamore, hmm. uh, w w trimmed with cedar, whose fragrance long since has fled, y'all. Uh, was meticulously set um, decades ago uh, with uh, 16 uh, royal banquets, 16 guests, 16 place settings with blue willow china plates. Well, second, there's an antique freak from London. Can't get enough of those antiques. He picks up a soup bowl and what? This is the real, we're talking Delft Holland, 1772. His eyes are adjusting to the dim light. He looks up at the vast wooden ceiling. Oh, oh, painted with snow-capped mountains, sparkling Charlie Rivers, uh, wildflower-dazed meadows, uh, animals, uh, snow leopards. Yeah, a well-fated mural of the Yarkon Valley. Oh, he looks down. Huge oak trunk with burnished brass ribbons. It's overflowing. With raw, huge chunks of lapis lazuli gemstones. Over... Yeah, from Badakshan, huh? Well... Uh, <laughs> so he unbolts the massive oak doors and uh, throws them wide open. And expansively, it uh, leads out onto this sorry, battlemented balcony. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Clay, pink clay stone, and uh, majestically uh, uh, guarding, overlooking the junction of these two strategic valleys. Yeah. And two enormous uh, brass field cannons, you know. Just like the story of Kim starts out. Little Kim sitting on uh, the biggest cannon outside of Lahore. We're talking those kind of cannons. You get this cannon, you rule. He's got two of them? And what's beside him? Well, this pyramid's a cannonball's all ready to yeah, do damage, y'all. Uh, well, Kipling... Holds his lantern close to the inscription on those guns, huh? Krupp Ironworks, Ruhr Valley, Germany, 1867. 